Okay, let's start with latitude and longitude. Really important to know these, be able to use them and know the difference between them. First up, we have this green line I have shown here is a line of longitude. You could say it kind of goes up and down when you're looking at the globe like this. All the longitude lines will uh, sort of all go through the North Pole. They all go through the South Pole as well. As opposed to uh, the line of lo uh, latitude is this red line here, and it goes like this. Uh, knowing which is which is important, and then working with the numbers and compass directions is really important. Uh, oftentimes I will tell kids like uh, latitude lines are flat. Latitude, flatitude. Uh, I once had a student teach me a method he uses where he uh, says it's the shape that your mouth makes when you say the words. And he was going, latitude, flat, longitude. He was doing this, this longitude, up and down like this. And then I would relay that kind of as a joke to my classes. And a lot of kids, like they, that's how they really remembered it. If that helps you, great. If not, do another way. I like latitude, latitude, flatitude, lat, flat. I like that. Uh, oftentimes it gets presented like this. Here's a world map or most of a world map. Uh, here in purple, we have zero longitude, longitude. That's called the prime meridian, called the prime meridian. So all of these numbers, 20 longitude, 40, 60, 80, these are all west. Okay, so that's 100 degrees west longitude. These are all east, all of these numbers here. And then here I drew in the equator in red. So all of these numbers, this is 10 degrees south, 20 degrees south, 30 degrees north, 40 degrees north, because that those are all compared to the equator. Uh, so, for instance, I have this one here. Now it's kind of zoomed in. You can't see every, you don't see all of the lines. You just see some of them. So the latitude of the red dot here would be 45 degrees south is the latitude. And the longitude would be 90 degrees west. Here is New York State, a map of New York State. This red line. Now notice they don't say north, south, east, or west on here, unlike the other map. So that you have to figure out. So this is a line of latitude in red, and it's 43 degrees. Now the question would be, is it 43 degrees north, south, east, or west? So here, there's a compass rose here. So I often tell students, well, where would zero be in the equator? Where would it be? Well, it would be all the way down here. It'd be down at the floor. So if it's down at the floor, this is what compass direction from the equator and say, well, it's north of the equator, therefore 43 degrees north is the latitude of that line. That, if you do it that way, it really helps. Here's a longitude degrees line. It's 76 degrees. And what is it? North, south, east, or west? Well, you we look at this again. Where would zero be? See, they're going up this way. They're going up in that direction. So zero would be way off over here. It's way off of the screen. If zero is here, this is what direction from zero? Compass direction, it'd be west. Therefore, the longitude of this line, 76 degrees west. Okay, this is important. Know it, practice it. Sometimes, uh, they, you know, the regents exam, this is from a regents exam, they really want to make sure you understand the concept of it and can apply it in other situations, which is really good. You know, it's like, can you problem solve and think through? Though I've seen a lot of students look at this and understandably be completely confused. What am I looking at? Where would 75 degrees north be? They just have trouble figuring it out. Because we usually don't look at, we usually don't look at a map like this. So it's like looking at the globe kind of, we're well, usually looking at the globe like this. It's looking at the globe like this, okay? And hopefully the idea is you understand latitude and longitude enough that you'll kind of recognize that and be able to work through whatever problem is presented here. Okay, Polaris, the North Star, and how it relates to latitude and maps. Here we go. So first off, I do want to point out that uh, if Earth, Earth is rotating here, this is Earth's axis. Earth's axis points out into space. It's not a real thing. You can't see it. But Earth's axis points out into space, and it just so happens way out in space, there is a star right there. And it is called, it is Polaris. We call it the North Star because the North Pole points directly toward it. Now, because of that basic geometry, there are some things that can help us with latitude. So first, how do you find the big uh, um, Polaris in the nighttime sky? Well, the Big Dipper is the first thing to find because these two stars are going to help you because these two stars are your pointer stars. They point out to Polaris here, which happens to be the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper. This is important to know. So this was from a region's question. I had, you, somehow you had to find Polaris here. So here's the Big Dipper, and then those are the pointer stars. Therefore, Polaris right there. I think I had a circle or something like that, but that's key to know, so be able to do this. This shows uh, it again. This is the Big Dipper at different times of the year, but you still have the pointer stars and then point it to Polaris, so to just show it to you a different way. Now, 
how can you find your latitude from Polaris? Well, if you measure the angle from the horizon to Polaris, in this case it's 52 degrees, the angle, that angle is equal to your latitude and it's degrees north of the equator. So, therefore, this person's latitude is 52 degrees north. Here, uh, this dude with the interesting haircut, he measures as 20 degrees above the horizon, therefore his latitude 20 degrees north. Sometimes, look, if this gets thrown at you a different way, this is a question about seasons, really, so it gets really focused on the sun's path, but Polaris is shown, if this was the sky here, Polaris is right here, and therefore, so this angle, it kind of shows you, it's 42 degrees, therefore, the location of this vertical post, latitude-wise, what latitude uh, is the post, 42 degrees north. Uh, look at this, the angle of these... Uh, this location here, 30 degrees above the horizon is Polaris, latitude 30 degrees north. Hopefully you see this pattern uh, because it's something you need to know. And then you have this guy here where I think they're trying to trick you. This was a multiple choice, 37 degrees. But basically between the horizon and Polaris is 53 degrees. Therefore, his latitude is 53 degrees north. Now we're going to deal with time zones. Okay, this is a diagram of Earth. It shows the sun here. It's looking down at the North Pole, okay? So you got to always try to recognize what diagram, what you're looking at here. So this is like a typical globe would be like this. This is the way we normally look at it. This would be looking down at it like this, basically, okay? You're looking down this way. So recognize what you're seeing. And then it gets really weird when they have the sunlight and the darkness in there as well. But... Um, the key thing is that right here, if you're someone and you're right there, okay, that, that the rotation, they're rotating into the light, so they're experiencing sunrise. As opposed to at the same exact moment, these people on the other side of the earth, they're rotating this way. They're right here. They're experiencing, they're rotating into the dark. They're experiencing sun set. Okay? So because of that, this is why we have the need for time zones. Um, Time zones are, uh, and this is noon, that's one, that's two, that's three. So each one of these is one hour. I know these are 15 degrees longitude wide. Okay, Each time zone is 15 degrees longitude wide. About. Um, that is a key thing to know. So therefore you can calculate, uh, if you have the longitude uh, numbers drawn in, you can know what the time zone is at any given location. And that's something you may need to do. So let's uh, show how this relates to the United States. So the time zones here always go by the uh, shaded area, not the lines, but the shaded area, Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific. And then this is a head, okay? Because Earth rotates this way, okay? It rotates this way. So if we go back to this previous slide, if you are in New York City, for instance, and you're right here experiencing that sunrise, well, people on the West Coast in the Pacific time zone, they're three hours behind. They're over here. It, they they won't be experiencing sunrise till they rotate this way three hours later. I think if you look at it that way, it really uh, helps make sense. So, let's say it is 6 p.m. in the Eastern time zone. As you go this way, it's going to be one hour behind, so it's going to be 5 p.m. And then next one is 4 p.m. and 3 p.m. So it kind of shows this three-hour time difference from us and the um, from the east during time zone and the Pacific time zone. Important to know it. Contour maps, isolines, really important for the Regents exam. Uh, I'm going to focus on some of the key parts of contour maps. So contour interval. Contour interval is what each isoline counts by. It's usually given to you, but sometimes you have to figure it out on your own. But it's definitely important uh, number to know when you're dealing with maps. So in this case, I tried a bunch of few, uh, a bunch of different uh, options here and determined that it's five because it goes 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, and it is in feet. It tells you it's in feet. Be careful because uh, some of these maps that will show you are in meters and the distance is in kilometers. So be careful. Here, the contour interval is five feet. Next up is the uh, how to determine where the steep slope or a gradual slope is on, on a contour map. And you can t tell a steep slope where the contour lines are closest together. So this is an island here, and this is the steepest slope because the lines are closest together. Make sure you know it. This, uh, we're back to this. Now, 
uh, I, can, I know right away that this is very gradual slope because they're much uh, further apart. If I wanted an easy walk to the top of this hill that wasn't so strenuous, I would go this way uh, because this way is much steeper. See, the lines are closer together. Key to know. Stream flow direction. How can you tell what direction does hammer stream flow? And they usually want a compass direction. Don't say downhill. They're going to say north, south, southeast, southwest, something such as that oftentimes. And it is the uh, look at the shape the contour lines make where they cross the street. You see how they kind of pointed here? We'll call that like a V shape is what we usually do. And that V points uphill or upstream. So the river will flow the opposite way like this. That's the direction of stream flow. We'd say the stream here flows toward the southeast. This case, okay. Uh, and now we can see, look, this V's here and V and V, and therefore that's the direction of stream flow. Know it. We have another one. Look at the, the V's here are pointing this way, and the Elk River is flowing that way into Grace Lake. Now, sometimes, well, watch this, I, look at this question. How can you tell from the shape of the contour lines that the stream flows northward between X and Y? So it's telling you that it flows northward. The question would be a sort of fill in the blank type of question. It says, how can you tell from the shape of the contour lines? And you would say something like this. The V's made by the contour lines point south, therefore it flows north. You could say the contour lines make V's and they point uphill or they point upstream. You could say the river flows the opposite direction that the V's point. Something that expresses that uh, would work. And now I'm back on this. On a contour map, as you um, are going uphill here, sort of the these lines, or these circular lines get smaller and smaller kind of inside each other. Now. Uh, so this is the top of a hill. But what if at the top of the hill it was like a big, you know, think of a big volcanic crater and it went down? How would you show that? Well, you use depression contours. And depression contour symbol is this. And they kind of show, show it like this. So this is at the top of a hill, but instead it's, it kind of goes down sort of like a bowl shape. Uh, I show it here because what, as you go from A to C to A to B to C to D, it actually goes down here. Okay, so this is the center like right here. So that's depression contours is really uh, important that you recognize what they are and how they work. This is a hand-drawn diagram, kind of shows a depression here and how it would be represented on a map. And here's another one here, similar, but it, they show the depression there and sort of how they represent it again with those. Um, here's a question that relates to it. So it tells you contour interval is 20 feet and these are some depression contours. What is the elevation of A? Well, this is 340, and it goes by 20, but I'm going downhill, so uh, this is 340, that's 320, that's going to be 300. So the elevation of A is 300 feet. 